Hello, in this video I'd like to show you how to calculate the slope of a line when you're given the coordinates of two points. So just given the coordinates, in this situation you won't actually need to use a graph. You could, but you don't need to. So let's say you're given a problem and the problem says you have these two coordinates, the coordinates of two points on a line, negative 4, 1 and 4, 5. There are, in this case, X coordinates and Y coordinates, an X and a Y. And you want to figure out what is the slope of the line. One option would be to graph the points and use what we already know about how slope is equal to rise over run. And we could see how far we're going to go up and then we could see how much we're going to go to the right to get our rise and our run but we don't need a graph and one way you can avoid using a graph is if you just remember that your rise is going to be equal to the change in y so here is your y-axis so your rise is how much the y values change as you move up the graph so this is your change in y right here so here is your change in y that would be this part here the change in y is going up that way and the run going this way is your change in your x values because here is your x axis so moving from left to right is moving along the x axis or changing your x coordinates so how can we do this without the graph well if we remember that slope is equal to change in y over change in x let's look at how the y values are changing so here's one y value and here's the other we're going from negative one to five well how is that changing that just got bigger it went from negative one up to five so it's increasing and it's increasing by six because negative one plus six is five so i know my change in y is a positive six well what is my change in x the change in x is going to be how much we're moving along the x-axis. So let's look at the change in the y values. We're going from negative 4 up to positive 4. It's an increase, so I'm going to be adding. How much do you add? Negative 4 plus 8 is equal to positive 4. So I know my run, or my change in x, is plus 8. So finally, once I know that, I've got my slope is 6 over 8, but remember you should always reduce those slopes to lowest terms. 6 over 8, well I know a 2 can go into both of those, so 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times, and so my slope is 3 fourths. That means up 3, right 4, up 3, right 4, up 3, right 4 is the slope of that line. I could use another variation of this formula, y minus y divided by x minus x, and to do that I would subtract the y coordinates, 5 minus negative 1 is 6, and 4 minus negative 4 is a positive 8, and that works fine. I happen to think though that this way just makes a little more sense. If you're just looking at how the numbers are changing as you go from one to the other, that makes a lot more sense and I think my students often get that correct uh, a lot more often than just trying to mindlessly plug numbers into some formula. Thinking of it uh, in terms of change in y over change in x usually works pretty well. Let's do one more example and then hopefully you've got it. So here's another one. So I've got the coordinates again of two points. Here's an x coordinate and a y coordinate, an x and a y. So these are two points on a graph, and I could get the rise and the run from the graph, but I don't need to. I'm just going to remember that my slope is change in y over change in x. So let's start with the change in y. The change in y, y is going from 5 to negative 4. From 5 to negative 4 is decreasing, it's getting smaller by how many? 5 minus 9 
equals negative 4. So I know in my slope formula, change in y is negative 9. What's my run? My run then in this case is my change in x. How are my x values changing? It's going from negative 2 to positive 1. That is an increase. It's growing. It's getting larger from negative 2 to positive 1. It's growing by 3 because negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So over here, my change in x or my run is positive 3. So what is my slope? It's negative 9 over 3, but I can simplify or reduce that. 3 goes into both of those, and I end up with negative 3 over 1, or just negative 3 as my slope, which means my line is going down 3, right 1, down 3, right 1. And I can see that on the graph. I'm going down 3, right 1, down 3, right 1, down 3, right 1. So you don't need the graph to get the slope as long as you remember to use change in y over change in x. Uh, if you want to refer back to the graph, I think it does help you to visualize it, but hopefully you can see graph paper is not necessary to get that slope. So hopefully that helps and good luck on any problems you're doing.